In this video, I will be providing you with what I consider to be one of the easiest ways for do-it-yourselfers to build a low sloping roof on a building with angled walls. And believe it or not, this video was actually inspired by one of our viewers like you. So if you have any ideas for videos, something that you can't find on the internet, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And it doesn't matter how dumb you think they are, put them in there anyway, and I will put it on on my list of videos to be made in the future. So let's go ahead and get started with our odd shaped building here. And the angles are not important. However, the length is because we are going to need the span of the building or the area where the rafters are going to be sloping to figure out how high we're going to need to raise the back wall. So we're going to be starting with walls that are the same height all the way around the building. And like I said, you could always raise the back wall and leave the side ones flat or you can raise the back wall and then slope these walls instead of using the filler boards that I'm going to use and to figure out how tall you need to raise this wall we will take the span of the building and multiply it by 0.25 and that would look something like this 15 times 0.25 equals three and three quarter inches to provide us with a quarter of an inch drop for every one foot of horizontal length and in most cases the minimum for a low sloping roof and since I'm going to want a little more slope in the roof I'm going to use a four by six and if you want a little more slope than that then you can use four by eights or four by tens or like I suggested earlier raising the back wall to whatever height you desire to arrive at the pitch that you need for the slope in your roof. And these beams can be simply toe nailed. You're gonna angle nail 16 D nails at an angle into the framing place, or you can use small straps, a strap that might connect the beam to the stud, for example, and then space these four foot on center. And you're probably gonna to wanna to put them on each side. And if you do put them on each side, then alternate the studs. For example, you can install one on this side here, and then go to the next stud to install it on the other side to avoid splitting any of the studs by using too many nails. And of course, you will need to shape the end there. And of course, you don't have to. However, it'd be a good idea to do so. And then we are simply going to shape another four by six from this point here to this point here. And this is the point I was getting at before. If you don't want to mess around with figuring out the angle of this wall, then you could always raise this wall forget about using the beams, and then cut these shaped filler pieces in here to make it as easy as you possibly can on yourself. And you can always angle this if you want to. However, I'm using a square finish here to also make it a little easier for me when shaping the board on the other side, because you're only going to need one four by six for this to create both of the boards. For example, if I take a four by six and I measure from this point here to this point Point here and then cut the board that long. I can simply snap a straight line from this corner to this corner and then cut this four by six and a half to create both of the boards I need. So this board here will go here, this one right here will flip over and then be used on the other side. Next up, let's go ahead and install our joist. And I'm not going to be providing you with step-by-step -step instructions. However, if you do need them, and I get enough viewers in the comment area who are looking for a little more information, then make sure that you let me know what you need help with, and I will consider making another video. And it will help. It will definitely help if I get at least 20 or 50 viewers wanting to see the same thing. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at how the front of a straight rafter or straight joist, however you want to look at it, will work with these angled walls. So on the front, we are going to have the front of the board touching. However, on the back, we are going to have a gap. Now you can go ahead and cut these rafters to fit. However, I don't think it's really going to be a big deal on a project like this because you're going to be able to install the blocks to tighten everything up. And again, if you're looking for a little more information about how to make these seat cuts nice and tight, let me know in the comment area because I'm thinking about doing another one of these videos to provide you with an example of how 
how you would build something like this with a overhang around the entire building, maybe a one or a two foot overhang, or a building with one or two foot long eaves. And on this one here, our contact point is going to be right here, and we're going to have a gap in the back here. And I will show you that gap after I have installed our blocks. And the top of the blocks will need to intersect the rafter at this point here and not this one. Otherwise, the roof sheathing might not work. And along with providing you with an example of the gap here between the rafter and the top plate, I also wanted to provide you with an example of what's going to happen if you have the block sitting on top of the wall. And I will leave it up to you how you choose to install your blocks, whether you want to have them sitting on top of the top plate or maybe install some type of a shim, maybe an eighth of an inch shim underneath the blocks or even reshape the blocks. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the blocking is going to look like like if we have the block sitting on top of the framing plates. And something like this usually isn't going to be that big of a deal because you're going to be nailing the sheathing to the fascia board. And even if you do nail the sheathing to the perimeter blocks, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at our mid-span blocks. And our mid-span blocks will be located in the middle of the rafters or the middle of the rafter length. And they are usually going to be staggered so that you can nail the them easier from both sides. Next up, let's take a look at our front blocking. And you shouldn't have a problem here with these blocks because the bottom is going to be nice and tight because we don't have any gaps here. Next up, let's go ahead and install our 2x4s. You can always use a 1x4 here. However, in this example, we are going to use a 2x4 to provide us with a little space between the back of our fascia board and the back of the finished wall material materials like siding or stucco. And if you are going to use thicker materials for your wall finish, then you might need to add a few more boards or redesign that part of the building. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board. And this is going to require a difficult cut here. And I don't know if I have any videos on that one yet. However, if I do make the other video, where I have the same building with an overhang, then I'll try and provide you with a couple of different ways to finish this corner. So let's go ahead and start wrapping this video up here by installing the roof sheathing, which just might be the easiest part of building this roof. And as always, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible.